To conclude the courageous accountability model, it's important to close out with either celebration or confrontation. If you have been diligent to clarify, connect, and collaborate with courage and heart connections, then most likely it's time to celebrate. But I know from personal experience that many people struggle with celebrating. Some of us have baggage from the past and have shut down our emotions as a protective strategy. In some situations that has worked well for us, but that's not the norm. And in the long run, flattening your emotions can do more harm than good. Also, I've noticed that many people whose natural DNA is highly results oriented often struggle with celebrating. They don't think they need it and they see it as a waste of time and effort. And some have a fear about celebrating. I have quite a few leaders tell me that they avoid celebration because they fear that if they support or promote it, people will let up, performance will go down, results will falter. The truth is that celebrations are a normal part of life. Some people may need to celebrate more than others, but everyone can benefit from taking time to feel good about their accomplishments. So those of us who are hesitant to celebrate, for whatever reason, need to break free from those shackles, else we'll be prisoners of our past. We have to take it head on and be intentional to work on it. So here are some tips. Plan it. Get help if it's not your thing. Celebrate team successes as a team. Crank up your enthusiasm and be joyful. Emotions are contagious and you want to promote positive emotions. Remember to be fair and consistent in celebrating the accomplishments of others. Consider the personality style or temperament of those who are being honored. For example, introverts don't like too much public attention, whereas extroverts love it. Regardless of the situation and people involved, the bottom line is that good leaders know that people love winning. They enjoy the challenge of taking their team over the top, celebrating, and then moving to the next goal and the next victory. Now let's turn to those situations where things have not worked well and it's time to confront. Confrontation can be difficult for everyone. Even those who are considered tough leaders can procrastinate dealing with accountability failures. It's generally not in human nature to move toward being uncomfortable. And for most people, confrontation is uncomfortable. From experience, I believe that you have to have a mindset that recognizes confrontation as being both the right thing and the kind thing to do for either unacceptable performance or undesirable behavior. Here are some tips. Plan your steps and then walk out your plan. Get your head and your emotions in the game and then confront with confidence and humility. Confront with a positive mindset. You've done your best to help this person succeed and it's not worked. Applying well thought out consequences will benefit everyone the individual, the team, you the leader, and the organization. It may feel a bit painful in the moment, but in the long run, you will know that you did the right thing. Finally, regardless of whether you've celebrated or confronted, be sure to take time to critique the process. Reflect on the entire courageous accountability model. What can you learn from this cycle of the process? What went well? What could you improve on for next time? Remember, experience is usually our best teacher. Find the learning that will help you grow.